Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good tevach, a good week. We continue our journey in the life-changing Sefer Tanya. This program is made possible by Rena Lights, LLC, and is in honor and memory of Rabbi Yisav Alevi Weinberg, Olav HaShalom, Rabbi Meisha Pinchas HaKoyen Katz, Olav HaShalom, Rabbi Yael HaKoyen Khan, Olav HaShalom, and is in schus and merit of Rabbi Zevi Cheskel HaKoyen and Risha Katz, Le'edich Yomim V'Shanim Tevis, for many long, healthy years. It's also in schus and merit of all the brave and holy soldiers protecting men, women, and children in Eretz HaKedosh in the Holy Land. May Jews, may Jews everywhere be protected, and especially the Jews in Eretz Yisrael, and may we finally merit to see total peace and total shalom with the Gula Hamitis Vashlem. We are in the middle of chapter 18, Perikut Ches Chai in Tanya, where we've moved over from the love and reverence, the Ave and Yir that a Jew generates through his work, namely the work of a Benini, the Eved Elikim that through strenuous effort, contemplation, giving birth to feelings, and recognizing in this world that what is priority is to love God and to revere God, not to love and revere materialism, is in the capacity and the reach of every person. Because is midas this is a personality, a characteristic that all of us have the capacity to reach. It takes work. And that work is integrating it and internalizing it. And the many different levels that a person can reach in that bainani itself. What the Alter Rebbe is introducing in chapter 18 and on is that there's an additional to the love and reverence that we generate through our work is what we inherit in our very DNA. Yerushalonu, ma'aviseinu, as he put it. Let's use the exact expression that he used is that every person has avimusuteres shebelev klolis yisrael. Every person inherently, every Jew has a dormant, innate love. She Yerushalonu ma'aviseinu, which emphasizes it's not up to your work. You have it. What you need to work is to access it and to actualize it. In addition to the work of generating, like we spoke till chapter 18, in the earlier chapters. But you have this within you. That's why we can say mo'id, like he says, which means that even someone that cannot contemplate, is not capable of contemplating and generating a love and reverence like we spoke about in the earlier chapters, namely from chapter 12 through chapter 17. Nevertheless, he says, Misha daitik tzor b'idir s'ashem ve'en leiv, e'en lo'i leiv lahovin b'gedul as'en s'abaruchu, to give birth to t'chilu rechima, to reverence and love, even in b'meichei in, t'unosei levad, meaning even on a very, on a very, what we called before, on a very dis, discerning level, meaning, that you don't have the full passionate love, but at least you recognize that it's worthy. God is worthy of being loved, as he explained in chapter 16. Even that he cannot reach. Because he has the Ave Mishateris. In other words, if we're only dependent on our work and what we generate through our effort, so some people will have more, some less, and some may not be able to access or generate such love. But now we're adding that something that you have within you. So in addition to what you have innately within you, the Moyach Sha'al Ta'alev in chapter 12, to be able to generate, to contemplate and generate emotions, or let's call it Moyach Sha'al Ta'alev, to refrain and control the emotions and the impulses of the animal soul not to affect you. And then to also generate love, that's one thing. Then there's another innate thing, force you have, which is the natural love 
that comes from your parents, comes from the Ovis, I should say, from the patriarchs, through your parents, because we all go back generations. We'll talk about that shortly as well. She's Jerusalem and And why? Because the Avisenu were Ovis Heinen and Markov. They worked their lives, became, they became totally dedicated, selfless vehicles, transparent vehicles to Elokus. And that gave them a merit. They were Zechel because of that. Al Kain Zochu Lahamshich, Naran Libneim. So they were merited to be able to draw down the Efesh Ruach and Neshama to their children. Achareim, Ad Elam, forever. And where are they drawing it from? From the Esos Fetus. They're not just giving them a gift. It's becoming embedded in their very DNA, in their very chemistry, in their very makeup. That's why he goes on to explain the Esos Fetus, the Gdusha, from the Arba Elamis. L'kol echad ve'echad, k'fi madr gesu, k'fi maisov. To each person, according to his level and according to his actions. That's what the others were capable of doing. So now we have another resource in our arsenal. This Ava Mesutaris. And that's why Kodav Elach Adover Mo'id for everyone, even those that cannot reach it through contemplation, like he said, because they have this Ava Mesutaris, and we'll talk soon about how that does emerge even in a person who's the simplest type of person. But just a few more points in summing this up. We've learned this already, but we're summing it up. So what al Rebbe is going to be doing now, well, he began, is talk about four things about this Ava Mesutera, dissecting it, like he said, to explain it well, the Shedish of the Ava Zu, which we will explain later in this chapter, the root, where is it called? The root of it. The Inyana, what is its very personality? That will be discussed later. Echi Yerushalanu, which is now what we just started talking about, how it's a Yerusha. What exactly do we inherit? Do we inherit the love? Do we inherit the personality of love? Ve'ech nichle bagam and how it also encompasses not just love, but also reverence. So all this the Alter Rebbe is going to explain in later chapters. For now, we're discussing primarily Yerusha, and we're going to talk about the Shadish. The root. Meaning where exactly you find it inside the nefesh. Okay, so now back to the Yerusha. We just spoke about the Ovis. And what they, through the Zeochen, that gave it to us. Now, the words, the Chol Echel Vechel, Kifi Madrigosu, Kifi Maisov, the simple meaning behind that is according to the level and the Maisim of each individual. In other words, every soul has this particular level. That's not a contradiction to what we're saying here. This Ava Mesoteras, this love that, was, that we inherit from the Oves, from Avram Yitzhak Yankiv, everyone has. But everyone, according to their level of soul. And also, according to their actions. We know that a person's behavior also draws down different types of energies. That's a simple interpretation. However, there are those that interpret these words that we just said, they interpret that it means that's referring to the parents of the person. The parents who draw down the neshama, give birth to that child. Not the individual himself. And what, one of the reasons that's explained that way is because if you follow along afterwards, what he says after in Tanya, when he talks about al koponim, afil l'kal shebekalim, peish yisol nimshel b'zivugom, so there he's talking about parents. That even a Kal Shabakalam of Pesha Yisrael, even a person who is a Kal Shabakalam, we spoke about as a very light soul. The truth is, Kal Shabakalam means really a, a person who's on a very low level. And Pesha Yisrael means a, a sinful person. That Bezivugam, in their union, they will give birth. So see, you see, there you see he's talking about parents. So that's why some interpret that 
Madrigos, Kufi Maisov, is talking about the parents. But that's so two different interpretations, but either way you can explain it. The idea is understood. Because it's basically saying the Ava Mesuteris, it's like a DNA that you inherit from your parents. There's a certain personality that all the children inherit. In this case, from the Oves, Agdeshim, which is Avram Yitzhu Yaakov, we all inherit Ava, Ava Mesuteris, this, this profound love for God. The question is what form it takes. So that's according to each soul, its level and its actions and its behavior. Or you could say it's also connected to the parents' um, b- level and behavior. But regardless, what we, what we do see is that everyone has the Ava Mesuteris. That's one thing I wanted to uh, folk, p- emphasize. Next thing, regarding Nimshech B'zivugam, there's also, can be interpreted more than one way. We interpreted the basic way is the Zivugam, the Zivug of the Kal Shebekalim, the Pesh Yisro, being that they are children of the Oves, Agdeshis, which means Agdeshim, which is the Oves, which is uh, Avram Yisro Yankiv, and they inherited to each one of us the Avam Esoteris. So one way or another, a Koponim, it will get to every Neshama. A Koponim, the level Nefesh, the Nefesh of Machos Dasi, as we discussed. It may not be the highest level of Nefesh, but it's Nefesh Machos Machos Dasi, Yishim Adrega Tachten, Shebekedusha Sasi. It's a lower level, but it's coming to but, but, it's, but, but nevertheless, it's there because it's coming from the office. But the zivugam is referring to the zivug, zivug of the Kal Shebekal and Pesh Yisrael. The Rebbe, in his notes on Tanya, he actually writes that, and, 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 and um, he actually writes with a question mark, the zivugam shala ovis. Perhaps it's talking about the zivugam of the, of the parents. Now, ovis can also be interpreted two ways. The ovis, the parents of the Kal Shebekalim and Pesh Yisrael, or of a Sagadeshim, which is the Avram Yitzhak Yankiv. Now the Rebbe writes it with a question mark. And for many, many reasons you can explain why it's a question mark, because it's not necessarily definitely Pshat, because the question is why is it relevant here? Well, one way you can explain it is because the Ovis, through their Zivuk there, when they had children, the Ovis, the, 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 the Avram Yitzhak Yankiv, they passed on to their children this Av. So ultimately, it comes even to the children of Kal Shebekal and Pesh Yisrael, the Madrega, the 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 Koponim, the Nefesh, the Nefesh, the Machos of Asiya. So they have something with which with the, within that lies the Ave Misuteras, as we shall discuss later. That in that Nefesh and Nefesh of Asiya lies Chachma, which has the Ave Misuteras embedded within it. Or if you explain it as the parents of the Kal Shebekalim then again, it's not so clear why is that so relevant to be mentioned here. But then it would also fit, if you said the zivugim of the parents of the Kal Shabbat then it may fit that Kfi Madrigos and Kfi Maisa means the parents, not necessarily the person himself. So there's different ways to explain it. Regardless, it's, the key thing is to understand that the bottom line is that every neshama has the Ava Mesuteris. And it's a Yerushalayim Avaseinu. One more point I want to address, someone asked, was regarding chapter 2, at the end of chapter 2, he also brought Kal Shabbat and Pesha Yisrael, and he asked a question there. Since Neshamas all come from Chelik Elikam and Mal Mamish, they're all part of the divine, and they come from Chachmose, like the Boye Chaben comes from Boye Chaav, that every child comes from the, the mind of the father, in this case, Olav Machshava, the mind of God, so to speak. So he asked a question there at the end, what about what it says in Arizal, Kisve Arizal, that is dependent on the, levu, the dependent on the zivuk and the kavonus a zivuk, the intentions during relationships, intimacy of of the father and mother. So he said that does not that doesn't address the neshama itself. That's the garment, so called the interface of how the neshama enters, and even how the shefa el yene, even from Hashem, how it channels into. Them. So it does have it can have a strong impact. That's why even sadikim, even the shamas of sadikim need to have parents who have kavonis that will also be aligned. Because you could have a great neshama, but it's coming through, let's say, God forbid, a polluted artery or a polluted conduit in that sense, spiritually speaking. But it's not about the neshama itself, so it doesn't change the pshat. So here, so the question is, here he suddenly brings Kal Shebekalim and he says, Nimshel b'zivugam, nefesh de nefesh de machos 
The answer is he's not talking here about Kedusha Sazivuk. He's not talking about the Kavona here. He's not talking about their intention and their effort and their intention and their, their behavior that affects the channel, the levush, how the soul will enter. He's talking about the very essence of the soul. And it travels through everyone. Because even Kal Sheba Kalim, when parents have children, all their children are their children. They all carry their genes and their DNA. And in that sense, the Avim Mishotetis that is there in each person, the Yerushalayim Avisenu, is everyone has. Al Kaponim, a nefesh, a nefesh, the Malchus Dasiya. It may be even higher than that. Okay. So then, now continuing on to summing up what we've learned. Va'afal Pikain. And even though an Ashama may be from Nefesh the Nefesh the Machos the Asiya, which is the lowest level in Asiya the Gdusha. So, bottom line is, however, it has, nevertheless, Ma'achashi, he's not going to explain how it works. Ma'achashi me'eses Firis Gdashis. So, fine, it's true, it's Malchus of Malchus of Asiya, but it's still a Malchus. It's still one of the ten spheres, holy spheres. And as such, it's one of the ten holy spheres. He klulos, he klulam ekulon. It contains all the other spheres within it. So this is a key point now. Because that tells us that these spheres, these divine energies, are not separate entities. They all encompass each other. So even when it comes down in a lower level, think of it like branches of a tree. Even if it's a very large tree and there's branches, it's branched out who knows how far. The smallest branch in the farthest edge of the tree is still connected to the tree and is still receiving its energy from there and its sustenance. It's just not a main artery or a main branch or definitely not the trunk of the tree. So the same thing in the family tree of the Jewish people. Even, if it's, even when it branches out to all the different levels, and this is what we call the branches, of whether it's the spheres of Chachma all the way through Malchus, whether it's Natsilus, or Mbriya, or Yitzir, and Asiya, as he's going to say, is Klula Makula. Even the farthest branch, the Malchus of Malchus of Asiya, that comes from the Kal Sheba Kalim and Peshi Yisrael, We have the Nefesh of Mechus, or Mechus of Asi, which includes all the other spheres. In addition, well, before we get to this, Klula Mekulon, which means, Gam Mechachme Dasiya, so Malchus includes also Chachme Vasiya, and of course also Bina and the lower spheres. Shebetech Melebesh is Chachme de Malchus Datsilus. Now he's going further. In addition to it encompassing all the spheres, it also encompasses all the spheres in all the worlds. So it's one thing you could say, okay, it encompasses all the spheres of Asiya. But what about the spheres of Bria? Or Yitzira and Bria and Atzila? So it says, no, the spheres are also encompassed of the higher worlds. So Shabbatechim Elubeshes Chachmet Demalchus Datzilas. That in it, within it, you also have the Chachma of Malchus of Atzilus. Shebetecha Chachma de Atzilus. And just as we said, the spheres all encompass each other, so the Malchus of Atzilus also has in it Chachma of Atzilus. The highest sphere of the highest world. So you see here, like in the branches, the farthest branch is still connected all the way to the, 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 main, bar, the main branch, if you wish. The first sphere of the highest worlds. And, what's, and what resides there? Shebo meir, eirein se'a baruch mamish. Being that these are divine spheres, so think of them as the branches of a tree. Which tree is it? It's a divine tree. So in it resides the infinite eirein se'a of the, of the divine light. Mamish. He says literally mamish. And he brings now proof to this, as we learned. As the verse states, Kedixiv Hashem b'chachma Yosad Aretz. God founded the earth with chachma. So you see here that chachma, the key here is the fact is that even though it's earth, even the lowest part of the earth, it all is founded by chachma. 
and the highest level of Chachma, Chachma Datsilis. Even though it doesn't say in the Pasuk Chachma Datsilis, it says Chachma Yosad Oretz, but Chachma Yosad Oretz, then he brings Vakulam, but Chachma Asisa. He brings a second verse, and you have made them all with Chachma. Again, we see Chachma being associated with Asiya. So you could say it's the Malchus of Asiya has within it Chachma of Asiya. But then he says the first Pasuk, Chachma Yosad Oretz, is sometimes interpreted that Oretz could be Malchus of Atzilus or Malchus of Asiya, and Chachma is Chachma of Atzilus. So the bottom line is we see that Chachma is involved in even the lowest levels of creation. So therefore in Malchus of Malchus of Asiya, you have Chachma, Chachma of Asiya, all the way to Chachma of Atzilus. But it goes through Malchus. Why does he mention Malchus? Because at the end of the day, it is channeling through Malchus. Okay. Now, we will talk more about Chochmah itself. Why is this? Why is Chochmah reign so supreme and so vital here? And this will also explain what he says in chapter 2 in Tanya, that every Neshama is rooted the Chochmah is Baruch, like Mamoya Ha'av, because Chachmah is the ultimate bridge between consciousness and beyond consciousness, between our reality and a higher reality. We say Chachmah ma'ayin timotza. Chachmah is the bridge, the interface. So Chachmah is where it all channels through. We learned also in chapter 2 in Tanya that Chachmah is the first, chapter 3 actually, well chapter 2 and then chapter 3, Chachmah is the first of the spheres. Like the spark, the channel. So we'll, we'll learn more in detail what that means. But bottom line is, we see here that even though the neshamas that are down the lowest levels, they're all connected to all the spheres and to all the worlds, to the highest level of Chachma, which ultimately connects it to Ein Sov Baruch Hu Mamish. Why is Chachma connected to Ein Sov Baruch Hu Mamish? Because Chachma is Chachma Ma'ayin Timotz, as I said, chapter 35 in Tanya later in the Haggah, he says, Shemaiti Mimoyri, I heard from my teacher, the Alter Rebbe writes, that a chokhmah is radiates the level of because chokhmah has that capacity to look beyond itself, the true nature of wisdom, to recognize and experience, to experience and recognize something beyond yourself. And that creates the, the, the love and the reverence, that creates the bitl. Chokhmah is also koyach ma, the ma, the bitl of chokhmah, to experience the ein sof. Now, even though the neshama not may on the lower level may not fully feel it, but in it is chokhmah that silas, which has the eden said baruch mamish. In that goes mislabish into chokhmah of malchus of atzilus, which is mislabish into chokhmah of asiyah, all the way to malchus of asiyah, malchus the malchus of asiyah. The nimsa, and here's where the Alter Rebbe then concludes. So, what do we derive from all of this? The Nimtze, he says, well, this results in the fact, that the infinite light of God is present in the Chochmah component of a person's soul, regardless of what kind of Jew the person may be. Whatever level has this, that's why the Alta Rebbe elaborates because he needs to establish this case. Because you could say maybe it only in higher levels of souls. No, it's in all the branches, in the farthest details, just like it is in a human body. Even the, the, the toe, your toenail, is receiving energy from the top, from the beginning, from the mayach, from the mind. So every detail is accounted for. And everything has ultimately the Eden Se Baruchu, which is why. There's a natural love in every human, human, in every Jewish soul to God. It's, it's latent, it's dormant, but it's there. Like he, and he, like he continues. And this level of chachma within the soul.
He's now going to explain. It doesn't remain on the level of Chachme. It comes downwards. He says, Abchinus Chachme Sheba. This level of Chachme within the soul. Im Eir Ein Sov Baruchu. Together with the Eir Ein Sov, which is within it, embedded within it, Hamalubash Ba, which is enclosed within it, Mispashetes, Bechol Bchinus Hanefesh Kula. It extends and spreads and expands throughout the entire soul, all the levels of the soul, every component within it. Because you could say, okay, fine. You have the fact that even the farthest branch, even that last little edge, is connected. But who says we're getting that level of energy there? So he says, no, the, the level of Chachmah with the alien of Baruch extends for, to every detail, to all the components of the nefesh, la'chiesa, to energize it, mebchinas reisha ad pchinas ragla, from head to foot. And he brings here a proof again. The proof just, 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 just um, confirms this concept. Kedixiva chochmet techaye ba'aleha. As the verse states, chochmet gives life to those who possess it. So he's explaining that means it gives life to every detail. Because life is not just given to some parts, to all parts. So wherever there's chochmet, it's giving life. So it's, therefore, it's not just a detached state. It's actually giving life. And we see that also with the branches of the tree, using that analogy. Every branch is getting its sustenance. So it all has that ava misoteras, that love within it. Now, a key thing to, to realize here, which is so powerful. Now, you can read this very academically, philosophically. The Alter Rebbe is making a case, a meticulous case, how each level is covered, and he's literally going through all the spheres. But you can think of it also in a much more personal way, as the Alter Rebbe writes in his introduction. Like when we talk about a shepherd, Moshe Rabbeinu, how he cares for each sheep. It's not an intellectual exercise. It's a love. Reyed Sein. Sein Marise. A shepherd. We know the story in Medrash, how Moshe cared for and recognized even that sheep that got lost. The Alter Rebbe is doing here is showing us emotionally and personally how he's finding every neshama in every part of existence. So wherever the neshama may be, Malchus, the Malchus of Asiyah, is connected all the way to the highest levels. This is the love of a Rebbe, how he's express, expressing and demonstrating it to every detail, to every soul. So when you think of it that way, it's far more than just laying out the academic map, so to speak, of souls. It's actually like a mother caring for each child, each individual child. So we'll stop here. TanyaApply.com is where you can find these and previous programs. Everyone have a good tevoch. And a freilichen, we're going into next week into Purim. So we have freilichen agdome to Purim, and then next week we'll be also Purim, but we'll have a class before that. This has been My Life Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Please join us again next week. Visit chasidasapplied.com for archived classes and more resources.